mordanting cellulose principles. Michel Garcia has refined his mordanting techniques for cellulose fibers over three decades. His innovation, particularly the dry and fix application of aluminum triacetate mordant, has significantly advanced the field. In this tutorial, Michel demonstrates how to evenly apply this mordant on large fabric pieces to achieve vibrant colors and introduces a novel iron aluminum mordant formula for achieving earthy tones on cellulose. Let's delve deeper into understanding this method. Aluminum stands out as an exceptional metal for mordanting, not only due to its effectiveness, but because it is non-toxic and abundantly available in the Earth's crust, thereby minimizing its environmental impact. Michel has already introduced you to wild dyeing with natural materials like clay, wood, ash and lime, emphasizing clay's role due to its natural aluminum content. There is no need to avoid using aluminum in dyeing. It's a potent tool once you grasp its properties. Now let's explore those properties. Aluminum enhances and brightens the colors of natural dyes through complex formation rather than dulling them. It forms stable complexes with all modern dyes which can alter the dye's molecular structure. This alternation may shift the dye's light absorption spectrum, producing brighter and more vibrant colors, as the complex dye absorbs and reflects light differently than the unbound dye. Such stable complexes have been found in ancient paintings, preserving their vivid colors for centuries. For example, aluminum ions can bind multiple molecules of alizarin, a dye derived from madder. Michel demonstrates this by creating aluminum hydroxide from aluminum sulfate and soda ash and adding this milky solution to the dye. This causes the dye to precipitate, forming a pigment, known as a lake pigment. As dyers, we aim to create these lakes deep within the fibers, resulting in stable colors with excellent wash and light fastness. This process requires the aluminum ion to bind simultaneously with the dye molecule and the fiber. Wool and silk naturally attract aluminum ions, simplifying mordanting by merely soaking in an alum solution. So, why can't traditional mordanting methods for wool and silk be applied directly to cellulose fibers? And why doesn't soaking cotton overnight in an alum or aluminum acetate lead to substantial aluminum ion accumulation? Cellulose fibers, mainly composed of glucose units, naturally exhibit low affinity for metal ions due to their chemical structure, which lacks functional groups that strongly bind metals. Soaking these fibers in aluminum salts result in minimal metal accumulation. The dry and fix method overcomes this by forming insoluble aluminum hydroxide within the fiber, creating a stable site for aluminum accumulation and effectively overcoming the fiber's low affinity for metal ions. Let's clarify these chemical concepts with everyday analogies. Imagine two simultaneous events at a community center, an entertaining magic show and a dull lecture. Dynamic equilibrium in this scenario is the balance of attendees moving between these events. Initially, attendees may check out both, but they eventually settle based on their interest, achieving a state where the inflow and outflow of people between the events stabilize. Here's how affinity works in this analogy. The magic show, being highly engaging, high affinity, continuously attracts and retains a growing audience. Conversely, the boring lecture, low affinity, sees attendees leave as quickly as they arrive, preventing any significant buildup of an audience. In chemical terms, a reaction with high affinity continuously produces and retains products, like the growing crowd at the magic show. Conversely, a response with low affinity doesn't accumulate products. 
much like the frequent exits at the lecture. The situation with insoluble product is different. Returning to our analogy, imagine if attending the boring lecture was mandatory. Participants would have to stay until the end, filling the room. Similarly, when we create insoluble aluminum hydroxide inside cellulose fibers, it's like making the lecture mandatory. The aluminum hydroxide stays fixed within the fibers, ensuring consistent and vibrant color. Michel's video supplement demonstrates the superiority of the dry and fixed aluminum triacetate method, highlighting its ability to save dye, time and water, and to ensure that vibrant colors are permanently fixed to the fabric. Michel guides us through the mordanting process for fabric pieces of varying sizes, involving preparing a fresh solution of aluminum triacetate from essential ingredients, alum, soda ash and acetate, thoroughly impregnate the fabric with this solution, allowing the fabric to dry slowly in a humid environment, fixing the fabric with a weak basic solution leads to the formation of insoluble aluminum hydroxide, acting as a powerful color magnet that binds dyes with high affinity. This approach can be referred to as the Egyptian or European method for creating affinity, overcoming the naturally low affinity of aluminum for cellulosic fibers. Let's discuss alternatives. The Indian method respects tenants' natural affinity for cellulose fibers. It typically involves a two-step process, tannin treatment followed by an aluminum application, effectively performing double mordanting. Another alternative is a process known as animalization, which involves treating cellulosic fibers with protein-rich substances like soy milk, skim milk and ketosan, their dye uptake and color fastness. The treatment forms a proteinaceous layer over the fiber, which serves as a protein matrix. This matrix increases the number of available bonding sites for the dye and may alter the charge on the fiber surface, enhancing its affinity for different dye types. However, the animalization method generally does not yield colors as vibrant as those achieved with the aluminum mordant. Michel will show this approach with Kitozen, an interesting new product based on recycling. Michel will continue in the next chapter with detailed instructions on preparing and applying the aluminum triacetate mordant, highlighting its effectiveness in achieving lasting, vibrant colors on cellulose fabrics.